This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome to The Secret to Everything with Dr. Kimberly McGeorge. And as usual, thank you for taking the time out of your weekend, your evening, your day. Hey, wherever you are to listen to the show, we've been getting great feedback and it is, as always, much appreciated. If you have an idea for a guest or a show, feel free to get a hold of me through the X-Zone or my website. And as always, you know what's so fun, you guys, about doing a radio show? I get to talk about things and interview guests that are fascinating and interesting to me and hopefully introduce you to topics and things that possibly you may never have thought of and also you may never have thought that they applied in any way in a practical way to your daily life. So today in a little bit, we're going to be talking to two people who are extremely knowledgeable in the subject of sacred geometry. And I know some of you just are like, oh, forget this. No, 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 no. You guys need to stay with me because a couple years ago, I actually taught a class on sacred geometry. And because we taught uh, that class, it really opened up a new space in me. And I started experimenting with one of the sacred geometry forms, which I'm going to actually ask them about, called the flower of life and the petal of life. And it was really phenomenal. We did a number of sp- experiments with people that I taught and in our groups. And it was just so fascinating. And after I did that, I develop the ability when I go into somebody's field, because as you guys know, I read energy and I can see energy. I now regularly, as soon as I enter someone's field, can tell whether what I call sacred geometry templating is aligned or not. And some of you are like, what the heck is she talking about? I don't have sacred geometry templating. Yes, yes, you actually do. (laughs) And hopefully these two beautiful people, Gregory and Gail Hogue, will be able to maybe shed some light in a very rich and practical way on this entire subject and why sacred geometry even matters in your outside world, in your physical world, in your body, in your energy field. I've also, when I've received kind of weird, what some people might call downloads or new information, sometimes that information comes in a bunch of sacred geometry shapes that I've never seen. So maybe we'll ask them about that as well. And so I am so excited to get into talking to them. But first, a couple observations of the coming energy for the next couple months. And not just the coming energy, but a couple of things that has been coming up repeatedly as questions from the audience, as questions from my students. And that question is, how can I go into 2017 with a new space for abundance that I didn't have prior or in 2016? And, you know, we all want to give the simple answer, the easy answer. And I just want to share with you the basics of how I answered this question in a class the other night. And that is, bring me into your home for 15 minutes and I'll tell you 
all the reasons and all the places and spaces that you do not have entry for abundance. And that's monetary, that's freedom, that's energetic. Abundance is many things, not just money in your life. And why am I saying that? Because the way that this reality is created, we cannot attract less than who we are being at any time. We also cannot attract less than any form of, and I think this will come into play in the sacred geometry conversation, of order and high frequency vibration that is on our land, that is in our homes, that is in our individual rooms, and even that's in our refrigerators. So everything matter. So one way of bringing more abundance, and we're actually going to have a class in January about this, about feng shui and rearranging the energy in your home to allow for the flow of abundance. But one way to do that is, you know, purification, purification of the body, going through your home, getting rid of the old, making room for the new. And December and January and even, you know, spring is such a great time to really make a commitment to let things go that do not have a clean, clear, high frequency vibration. Everything is energy. Everything matters. All those old clothes that don't fit, that are too big, that are too small. Honestly, guys, I have to confess, I think I have a skirt that is like the tiniest size from like 10 years ago. You know, we cling to these things. We're like, maybe someday I'm going to be that tiny again or maybe we think oh I'll never be that big again or or you know our our great 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 grandma handed down like 70 quilts and so we keep them and and all that stuff negative and positive has a frequency and so as we interview these different guests and as you get for, more familiar with my work I want you guys to understand how each of these subjects and each of these guests fits into the everything is energy, everything is frequency, and why this matters to you on a very practical level. And speaking of frequency, the energy is speeding up. There's a lot of possibility opening up, and we'll talk more about that later, right after this commercial break, right here on The Secret to Everything with Dr. Kimberly McGeorge. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Nemology science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Nemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. 
If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today, Know the Name, Know the Person, or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Afterlife expert Roberta Grimes was the first one to say that dying can be fun. Now her best-selling book, The Fun of Dying, is available in stores worldwide. So if you wonder whether death ends life, how it feels to die, or what heaven might be like, The Fun of Dying was written for you. And if you have always been afraid of death, or if you worry that your life is no meaning, let The Fun of Dying ease your fears and bring new meaning to your life. Nothing said in The Fun of Dying is based on the teachings of any religion. Instead, Roberta draws on evidence to explain how death happens, how it feels, and what comes next. A lot of the best death-related evidence was produced in the first half of the 20th century. When it is put together with recent discoveries, it tells a consistent and amazing story. Roberta Grimes blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Her wonderful book, The Fun of Dying. Welcome back to The Secret to Everything with Dr. Kimberly McGeorge. And our topic today is going to be sacred geometry, the pathway to source, and and we'll get into what source is, and abundance, which kind of goes along with my intro. And we have two wonderful people with us. We have Mr. and Mrs. Hoke, Gregory and Gail. So welcome to The Secret to Everything. Thank you for having us, Kimberly. It's, It's fun to be here today. Hi, Kimberly. I I enjoyed what you were saying earlier, and we're really excited to uh, talk more about what sacred geometry is about and what it can do for people. Yeah, absolutely, because I I love that you brought that up and that I brought that up, because I think I used to think like sacred geometry is something like old, like which it is, like you hear the word sacred and you're like, oh, it's all, all ancient and it really doesn't have what we call in my business, current energy. And so I think a good entry point is probably, before we get into your guys' story and how you even came to be playing in this arena, is what is sacred geometry and why the heck should we care about it? Wow. It's it's such a big question that it's kind of, it's (laughs) more than the elephant in the room. I mean, we're really inside the elephant. And Like a fish in water, we don't recognize the water all around us. So everything in creation, from the way an atom is constructed to the way universes and the universe itself that we're in, and galaxies, they display very definite geometric aspects. Even the other day I was reading about the photon, the beginning impulse for all life is a geometric structure. And so we have geometry around us in plants and minerals and animals. In our body, we can look at it and see certain proportions and ratios. And so all around us, this is the way life expresses itself in patterns and rhythms and cycles. And if we as human beings can tap into those patterns, rhythms, and cycles in the way we keep time and and look at the stars and the planets and the universe and what's happening to the planet itself, or the way we can build our structures, our homes, and the clothing and the dishes and all the different components that we have around us, the more we replicate what's already been done in nature, we can create a resonance in our life. That means, like you were talking earlier about everything is energy, everything is frequency. Well, if we have a C tuning fork and we start playing a C tone, 
we can get that tuning fork to start to vibrate just because of resonant frequency. Now, if we start having things in our lives that, uh, as far as the structures around us, that resonate with the archetypes of the universe, the way energy is created, we can bring more of that energy, more of that coherence into our lives. I mean, it's what you were talking about, Kimberly, at the beginning with feng shui. When you work with your home in the way energy flows through what's been studied through eons of time by the Chinese, by um, the East Indians especially, they've worked with how energy flows in a space, where the door should open, where, you know, the, the windows are, etc. What we can do is we can create resonance with higher dimensional energies. And the more resonant I think we are, the more sacred that geometry becomes. Obviously, a lot around us isn't sacred until we make it so through that application of how do we become more coherent and connected. You know, uh, Kimberly, I think when we become conscious, we want to understand the universe. And not only does sacred geometry help us in understanding the universe, it does something that's really profound, and that is we want to be connected. We want to be connected to soul, to source, to the essence of who we are. And with our work over the last 30 years, what we found is that through sacred geometric forms and different tools that we construct, what we're actually doing is providing opportunities for people to be more connected to source. And that's when, when they're in resonance with that, that's when life is flowing in the way that offers them greater health, greater abundance, the, the kind of well-being and love and joy that all of us really want at the core of who we are. I absolutely agree. Let's back up a bit. So um, I read in your bio that Greg is a scientist and you are an artist, among other things. We all are a lot of things, really. And that you know, you've come together and you both had your own experiences, obviously, with consciousness prior to meeting each other and beginning your work and your business. So tell me kind of a little bit about individually your life's journeys up to this point and then kind of how you met and then what was the trigger to kind of, you know, we all kind of have a focus. Obviously, my focus is frequency, even though I do a lot of other things. I dabble in the paranormal I do psychic readings, and your guys' focus is obviously sacred geometry. So I'm curious, what spearheaded it to that laser focus that now you guys create forms and tools to kind of connect sacred geometry with people and their lives in a very practical way? Well, I started out um, in the sciences, and toward the end of my college career in the late 60s, I started becoming more interested in the humanities. Um, And then after I graduated, I uh, worked with a number of different meditation masters and became very interested in how consciousness could be affected by meditation. And then I started building geometries in terms of pyramids. And eventually I had a kundalini awakening, which meant that I had a lot of energy moving through my body. And this happened in the late 70s and early 80s. I was uh, really for a while struggling with the amount of energy running through my body. It was almost painful. But in the end, it opened me up. Uh, That transformation physiologically in my body opened me up to being able to tap into higher dimensions, tap into information. And I started um, communicating with higher dimensional aspects of my being, of the universe, 
and I started building some of the things they were showing me, which were geometries. And that's where I started <laughs> when I met Gail. And I came from a different perspective. I had been exploring painting, art, um, and really getting into color and light, understanding the universe that way. And during that same time, I was fascinated with the work of Buckminster Fuller. And, he, you know, he's that genius that lived a number of years ago that created the geodesic dome that brought to us the word synergy. Mm -hmm. And I was fascinated with geometry and the tetrahedron and different things of that nature and also his philosophies of life. So that really piqued my interest into geometry and actually set up an interaction between Gregory and I where we kind of recognized each other and that we had a journey together. Interesting. It's interesting how things happen. Speaking of the tetrahedron, um, often when we do um, the scans that we do and people come up, their body says, okay, my sacred geometry is out of whack. People often call, I call it calling for, um, because they're the ones telling me what's going on. I'm not the ones telling them usually what's going on, but oftentimes the tetrahedron comes up. And in my spiritual work with uh, let's say darker dimensions and, and other when people are being maybe haunted by some negative things, often the tetrahedron again comes up as a very high frequency protection tool. What is your view kind of of the tetrahedron and is that built into any of your work? The tetrahedron is the very first uh, geometry that's created in the third dimension. And it was what the ancients called... <laughs> the symbol for fire. And it's very fiery. Actually, uh, it can burn off a lot if you do it uh, kind of metaphysically uh, around the body and envision that. But it's really too fiery to build physically and live in or be around until you add a second tetrahedron pointing down. And then from the right perspective, you see the two tetrahedrons, one up and one down, forming a six-pointed star. And that's a balance. So when you have the star tetrahedron, you've got more balance, you've got more harmony, you're working with masculine, feminine, higher, lower. So the tetrahedron, as you said, has a purpose to maybe burn some things off, but then when you want to get into growth and balance and working to center in the heart, the six-pointed star, the tetrahedron, is really at the core of our being over the heart, balancing the upper three chakras and the bottom three chakras at the heart chakra. And when you asked about whether we use this in our work, very, very definitely, with, I would say, the vast majority of the different structures that we create, tetrahedrons are a primary source of energy. We build on them, you know, whether it's different arrays or interpenetrations of tetrahedrons, it's all there. And every one of the platonic solids is very important and a core part of how we go from pure energy into the physical domain. So um, starting at the very beginning, it's incredibly important. And, and speaking of Buckminster Fuller, one of the things that fascinated me about um, his explanation of the tetrahedron is that it is what he calls the closest packing of spheres. So this is where nature is able to really focus and create the greatest dynamic energy in a particular space. So, um, so that's an important way of, of viewing what is available to us with these different shapes. That's really fascinating. I had no idea that that was fire energy. And as soon as um, Gregory started talking, I'm like, I am so out of my depth here. Like what I have been shown and taught about sacred geometry is just like, so not what Gregory knows about 
sacred geometry. I could really learn a lot from you two, which I love. Like I said, I kind of dabble in it. And the only reason I do dabble in it is because the body and the energy field is so insistent. And we see this with the technology I use in calling it in. And that's one of the reasons I wanted you guys to come on this program, because I really want to get it out there that this is kind of an important aspect that not everybody in consciousness or definitely not everybody on the street even knows about. So we're getting ready to go into a break, but when we come back, I would like to talk about the real practical aspects. Can sacred geometry decrease stress? Can it increase peace? How can sacred geometry really affect our feelings of abundance and our money flow? And we'll talk about also the tools that you have created to help connect all of that right here on The Secret to Everything with Dr. Kimberly McGeorge. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we'll weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Mutual Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention, specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration, and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at gwwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at... Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. Afterlife expert Roberta Grimes was the first one to say that dying can be fun. Now her best-selling book, The Fun of Dying, is available in stores worldwide. So if you wonder whether death ends life, how it feels to die, or what heaven might be like, The Fun of Dying was written for you. And if you have always been afraid of death, or if you worry that your life is no meaning, let The Fun of Dying ease your fears and bring new meaning to your life. Nothing said in The Fun of Dying is based on the teachings of any religion. Instead, Roberta draws on evidence to explain how death happens, how it feels, and what comes next. A lot of the best death-related evidence was produced in the first half of the 20th century. When it is put together with recent discoveries, it tells a consistent and amazing story. Roberta Grimes blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Her wonderful book, The Fun of Dying... Back to the secret to everything with Dr. Kimberly McGeorge. I am here with Gregory and Gail Hogue, and we are talking about all different aspects of sacred geometry and kind of digging into this topic together. And 
I have so many different directions I'd like to go, but one thing I'd like to talk to you about is my really my first introduction to sacred geometry. And I assume this is sacred geometry. You guys can correct me because maybe this isn't considered real sacred geometry. I'm not sure. But was the flower of life and the petal of life who was introduced to me by a dowsing friend of mine and I became so obsessed with it we actually handmade these giant giant we would make them giant you guys like four feet by th three feet or four feet or whatever it was crazy and um, people would hang them over their beds and hang them on their walls and and you kind of can get really there's something really magnetic about these shapes and the flow and the angles and the curves and the and the frequency of it would you consider the flower of life is that sacred geometry or is that like an offshoot or something else? It's a wonderful instruction tool. So it's, <laughs> teaching us, it's teaching us how circles pack closely. And circles exist in 2D, that is on a piece of paper. And so mm -hmm. one of the things that um, we suffer from, human beings that is, is that we are three-dimensional beings, but almost the entirety of our knowledge is, is shared in a 2D fashion. And so uh, I'm talking about everything from books, paper, and so forth. And when you're working to affect the energy in an environment, um, like for example, if you want to work with a feng shui of a room, you need to go into that room and rearrange some physical things and put some color in or, or whatever form of feng shui you're using to affect a 3D reality. And the thing about 2D, when you brought it out and you made, the, made it physical, it had a greater effect than if you left it as a piece of paper. Because if you turn that piece of paper sideways, it disappears because it doesn't have any depth. And consequently, its effect on the physical 3D dimension is mostly dependent upon um, the consciousness of the person that's interacting with it. And even going back into feng shui over the millennia, um, there are things in feng shui that are not really um, patterns of the way energy works, but patterns of the way, ener the way people think energy works. And human beings are such remarkable conscious beings that over time, if they keep practicing and believing something, they will make it so. And so it is with some of feng shui. It's it's so because human beings for hundreds and even thousands of years have believed and taught their descendants that this is the way it works, and so it does. And so we're part of this whole mix that's really valuable. And, and so the flower of life is a, a beginning form that shows us how spheres pack. They create something called the vesica Pisces which has all the root numbers in it that you can create other geometries from. So there's value there. It's just bringing it into 3D is what has a stronger effect on the environment. And so maybe I was more intuitive than I even imagined when I had this compulsion. And really, I, I have to describe it as a driving compulsion that I had to put this into 3D. Um, and then maybe as I shared that with the people that purchased it, it became much more effective than just, you know, printing out things and sticking it out under, you know, under your mattresses and things that are commonly shared with how to use you know, like you said, 2D sacred geometry. I have to share with you, I was having a problem with a mirror in um, my bathroom, as you can imagine being who I am. I tend to have interesting energetic experiences. And um, I have this beautiful art piece that's a large pyramid, uh, perfectly proportioned, made by an artist friend of mine um, of Oregon. And it was in another room. And I just had this thought. I'm like, if I go put this in front of my bathroom mirror, that's going to close the what? The portal. And I just plop this beautiful piece of art, which is kind of a weird place, you know, to have it in your bathroom. 
but in its 3D, of course, in front of my mirror and all paranormal activity ceased immediately. No other paranormal activity came from the bathroom. Now, other parts of the house, that's another story. So I, there has to be something to this. And I know you guys know. And by the way, Gail, I see why you like Gregory because there is no bigger turn on than an intelligent man. So I see why you married him. <laughs> He's incredibly I, smart. He's I love a that. very beautiful, intelligent woman. Oh, too. I can tell that too. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to share a couple of things about you guys uh, with the audience. Actually, I'll just share them right now since I brought that up. But I've got to tell you, it, it tickled me because I have this beautiful tech that I've used for 17 years, about eight different pieces. And I happen to run both of your guys' auras, uh, just out of curiosity, I, I do. And I have to tell you, Gail, you are a very vibrant, high-frequency person. You both have high frequencies. But Gail is a very colorful, high-frequency person. And I have to tell you, Gregory, you are very integrated, which is actually a lot of people don't understand this, but you know, I try and we're teaching this in my classes. But integration, as you can probably know already, working with sacred geometry and all the knowledge that you have interdimensionally is what I consider the echelon of everything. So I just wanted to say that you guys do walk your talk, which is beautiful. We don't always find that as you two are aware in consciousness that there's a consistency with who you are both being with what you are doing, if that makes sense. It does. And, you know, that's that's who we are all the time. And it's always nice to be consistent because then you don't have to pretend and know, remember what you were doing with one person or one thing and another. So we're committed to this, definitely. <laughs> we are. And being grounded. I Even though this goes way out there sometimes and, and you know, it's sort of off the charts, from what people normally accept or expect, um, I'm a pretty practical person, and everything that we do is really oriented towards how can we make this purposeful? You know, what is it that we can contribute to consciousness? Because, you know, at the core of everything, we believe that the issues that we have facing us in our lives and on the planet are all about consciousness. And when we shift consciousness, that's when we can see the kinds of outcomes that we want. And so sacred geometry is what we've been using and what we've explored as a profound tool to bring us to those higher levels of consciousness. And honestly, when we were talking about 2017 and what's up for us, our commitment is to be an influence on greater consciousness on the planet. And we feel like that's really where we're going to make an awesome difference when more and more people are focused on the good of all and understand how we're beings who are here to evolve consciousness. I love that. It's funny because um, I usually theme my years and the theme that came in for 2017 for my business, and my brand is radical light, which is basically what I just heard you say, you know, that we really need to uh, walk our talk and contribute to consciousness on the planet. Absolutely. That is where it's falling out and where it's succeeding. That is where it is succeeding. So you guys don't just teach about sacred geometry like Gregory shared you've been experimenting and you know making 3d models or bringing this to life how did the whole metaform brand and, and that come to be was that a natural outgrowth of you know what you started playing with by making these big big expensive structures and then you decided to make it practical you know for the masses or how did that come about well you know it, it's really interesting when Gregory and I met, um, I was bringing back some of my paintings from New York, and um, I was in a home that he had just sold to a friend of mine, and he was carrying around this box of 3D sacred geometric forms with all these different tetrahedrons and all kinds of stuff. And I looked at that, and I said, what have you got there? What are you doing with that? And do you know the work of Buckminster Fuller? Which he didn't. And so that is <laughs> that was sort of like the um, the piece that got us interested in each other. And from that perspective, I could feel because my intuitive capabilities have always been very high, and so I could feel the energy coming off of these different structures. And 
we got together and started to really detail what this was all about, you know, where we could take it. And um, very early on, um, we came up with the name Metaforms, which is the name of our business. And, um, and that was about, you know, going beyond form so that we could mm. provide something for people that took them to another level. And um, so, you know, that, that was really the origination of how we got together. We knew that we had work to do. Um, as soon as I, you know, stepped back from our original meeting, I remember thinking, wow, I know we have work to do. I had no idea at that point that we would be um, lifelong companions and lovers and all of that. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was an interesting play. I knew we had a mission, though, so that was kind of fun. And sacred geometry was what brought it all together. And the energy, what it could be, what it could do for people was so compelling that it just, it, it just moved us both to a whole other level. We work together on this business and have been for 30 years and we're we wow. connect 24 hours a day so it, it's powerful that uh, we can do it and we get along so well when we write when we we correct each other's writing we we work in and out of each other all the time and when we have questions we both tune in to higher dimensional um, aspects of reality and that's how we're led to create everything because the geometry of particular kind of metal or a particular kind of uh, crystal or even organic materials, we know how to put things together from just asking our guidance, what kind should we use, how should we do it, and so on and so forth. It's very complicated and then fun what we've been able to do together. And we're coming up against a break, so I'm going to depart just for a second. And do you, do I understand correctly, do you guys live in Colorado? Is that where you live right now or most of the time? We we have a couple hundred acres around us in wow. Colorado. We work with vortexes and large forms, all kinds of things, north of Boulder, Colorado. I just wondered if that was deliberate, if you guys chose Colorado. I was just in Golden um, a, a couple weeks ago, and I just, there's such a difference. I live I live in another amazing place, North Carolina, but uh, Colorado has some very, very special, unique energy, and I wondered if you chose that deliberately um, because of that. Yes, and, you know, deliberation is sometimes hindsight, where you see how spirit moves you and gives you no choice but to put one thing foot there and then the next foot there and pretty soon you've walked to the place where spirit wants you to be and then in retrospect this is the land where we came in to buy it with some other people they all disappeared we ended up being where spirit wanted us to, to be and they've worked with us in opening up vortexes here doing a lot of amazing things absolutely and we'll hear more from Gregory and Gail Hogue right after the break on Secret to Everything. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213 213- 
401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. What Happened in Benghazi is revealed by Nicholas Genix, author of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. He informs the American people that President Obama deceived them by advocating a strong foreign policy prior to the 2012 presidential election, and Hillary Clinton supported this deception. As the title infers, there is a connection between Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. Ample evidence informs Americans that Obama's early indoctrination in the Quran developed an infinity for Islam, why the Quran is the source of discontent in many countries, and why the Obama foreign policy deception led to poor military action and caused the loss of American lives in Benghazi. Genix provides 36 questions for the Select Committee on Benghazi to validate if Americans are justified to mistrust President Obama and Hillary Clinton. An overview of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi is presented on the website www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. You're listening to the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. You are listening to The Secret to Everything with Dr. Kimberly McGeorge, and we are talking about sacred geometry and really how it can apply if you choose to allow it. And even if you don't, it still affects you and how it affects abundance and connection to spirit and other dimensions and all sorts of amazing things. So you have a number of products on your website and one thing is called the Heart Companion and that made me super curious. So could you share with us a little bit about the Heart Companion, what that does, how it came about, maybe even if you have any stories or testimonials, that'd be awesome. We have so much on the Heart Companion. It basically uh, came about because we were looking for ways to take 3D forms, like I was talking earlier, and I found a way to express them in a 2D fashion so we could shrink things down. And we have about 35 antenna systems in there. We work with it in vortexes on our land with some very complicated chambers with frequencies, sounds, inert gases. And in the end, what happens is in our environment today, we have 
EMFs and, and problems with computers, cell phones, toxins in the environment. We have our own um, difficulties with the emotional body and all our judgments. And wearing the heart companion, the number of antenna systems in it and what we've done with it, it allows people to vibrate at a higher frequency, a more coherent frequency. So what starts happening is people start connecting in through their heart center to their higher self. And we have people beginning to feel more love, more consciousness. Their intuition increases. Their ability to manifest things, to create things. Because we create from that higher, clear place within us. And this is a tool that allows that to happen. I was going to share a quick story because I know you were talking about abundance earlier. And that is we also have created these activations that are on our website for the people who are working with our tools. And they're short meditations um, that, you know, you can put on your iPhone or whatever. And there was a woman who had been, she was a realtor. She had been working on a short sale for a year. And it just was not moving. It was a big property. It was worth like a million dollars, and it was just going nowhere. And she had the heart companion. She worked with one of the um, one of the activations that were on our website. And the next day, she completed that sale. It all came together. So the energies and that shift in consciousness that happens when we're connected, because it's really about connecting ourselves to the, the greater expression and higher realms of who we are. When that happens, then things like that are very common where abundance shows up, where the right relationships show up, where people feel like they're being acknowledged and they're being heard and appreciated. And, you know, the other thing that happens that's very cool is people stop procrastinating because they recognize that internal purpose. And that is the driving force. And so they keep in their presence, put one foot in, in front of the next, and they are really on target in a way that is, is very different than it had been earlier. I want to go back to a huge thing that I just heard Gregory say, which is EMF. In the scans that we do, and just my awareness of the death towers, which is what I call them, and radio towers that just are going up in a very excessive way in all of our communities, and my knowledge of HARP, and I'm sure you guys are familiar with some of this stuff too, but do your devices or maybe certain ones, do they help build up your, uh, build your frequency up or, you know, strengthen your auric field and mitigate some of the damage of all the EMF that we are being subjected to? Absolutely. You see, what's happening with a lot of these uh, frequencies coming in, it's like a white noise that totally scatters and blocks the flow of energy within us. And when And I can show this with muscle testing with people where I'll have them holding a cell phone, they get very weak, and then I'll put one of our devices, like the Heart Companion, uh, on their body, and they get strong again because it keeps them connected. It keeps them focused. It keeps them in a space where they can move into their heart center and feel that love. It's been remarkable to watch young people like teenagers who are diagnosed as bipolar and have all kinds of difficulties and are consequently on a lot of drugs to take care of those difficulties find that they can wear one of these heart companions and they get into their power. They're able to feel grounded. They're able to feel present. They're able to feel relaxed for the first time because so many of the young people coming into the planet are really higher vibrational people that have fallen into, you know, the presence of what's going on in the world today, which really needs to shift. And so it's wonderful to watch them shift just with having some of these tools on their body shifting their field. And we've been able to measure it, and we've done all kinds of measurements with different scientists where we've 
seen that the internal organs come into balance. So many things within the body starts to um, balance out the uh, the auric field, the energy field around the body becomes solid where it's often full of holes. So people feel better and we can measure it. They're actually shifting in their physical body in the way that things are going on that allows them to feel better. Yeah, it's so important that we find all of us, um, you know, I think it's so important that we um, or have someone that has a tool to measure the EMF in our homes because I think people would be very shocked, you know, some of the most simple items, which I don't, I will never have an electric range. I like to cook on gas, but an electric range is one of the things that puts off the most EMF in our homes. And we just don't think of things like that. And so, you know, everyone's like EMF, oh, you know, a tower's, you know, 500 miles away, which isn't true for most of us. But, you know, even if you don't have towers near you, this is still, I think it's actually the health issue of the decade and it's just getting worse. So anytime, you know, I find people that are making tools or that are, you know, are mitigating the effects of EMF is so crucial that you guys explore that as a solution. And I think it's really important to get some, you know, just a basic tri-field meter in your home and walk around and, you know, make sure your bed's not against, you know, where the electric box is and all sorts of things you can do, but then definitely bringing something into your field and even into your home to mitigate the effects. And obviously we could talk for hours and hours, but we are running out of time, like we usually do on The Secret to Everything. So let us know how we can find out more, um, if there's any programs you're going to be on upcoming, or I know you guys have some videos on YouTube, how we can get a hold of you. Please share with us that information. Wonderful. We have a website, and I'm going to give it out to you right now. It's www.iconnect2all, so that's I-C-O-N-N-E-C-T, the number two, all, A-L-L dot com. And then we have, um, yeah, we've got a YouTube channel. And you can get to our videos through our website. And we do have a YouTube channel that is called um, Sacred Geometry Tools. And lots of um, everything from meditations where we're showing spinning geometries, different conversations that Gregory and I are having um, I think in the coming year we're going to be getting into a lot more about Metatron's Cube, which is an amazing three-dimensional sacred geometry that we work with that we feel is very key to so much of what's going on structurally. So lots of great stuff. And um, um, we don't have anything specific that we're planning on in terms of events right now. However, we do announce that on our website. So check it out and um, we have some really nice free videos that you can download that are awesome. Yeah, I love that you guys share so much free information. Thank you so much for what you do in your service to the planet. And um, I just have to tell you also, as you guys know, it's so funny because in uh, Gregory's aura, it was mostly healer energy, at least at this moment we change. And uh, yours was healing and intuition. So again, just a testament, you know, in living energy to who you are as being. So thank you for that. And thank you so much for being on the show. And hopefully we can have you back sometime. We'd love to. It's um such a big topic and there's so much to share. It'd be fun to share for a much longer time. Absolutely. Well, take care. And for those of you who'd like to get a hold of me, um, you can find us on www.secrettoeverything.com. We have amazing programs. I'd like you to seriously consider joining our monthly membership program, Ultimate Awakening. We have live events throughout the year. I know for sure we just decided to do a huge intensive that will be very limited and our last retreat I think our last retreat this year that we had in the North Carolina mountains extremely powerful healing retreat I think we sold out in under two weeks so if you are interested in being in some of our higher end more exclusive events then definitely get a hold of us and jump on that right now we are in the middle of our spiritual warfare training called the covering it is mind blowing worth joining just to see the pictures that i put up every week that i take of all sorts of crypto creatures and portals and 
dark energies and, and bizarre things. So definitely check out what we're doing over at The Secret to Everything. It is all based on what you guys are asking for and what you are interested in. And coming up, the topics we're going to be talking about, I'm not sure who's next week, but we will have feng shui and more crypto and bigfoot and all kinds of fascinating things so please check out our archives on the x zone and like i said check us out on the secret to everything.com i love you guys thank you so much for listening and i'll see you next week <laughs>